this so maybe learning is going to get Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Jacksonville, a production of the University of North Florida's Department of Communication and CW17. I'm Morgan Young. And I'm Kelton Givens. We're here each month with stories about our life on our favorite coast, the First Coast. Today we're recapping some of our favorite stories from the past few months. Some of us have a little furry friend who's waiting for us to come home after a long day of work or school, but others find that a furry friend isn't what they want. I went out to meet th these exotic creatures that some people find cute as man's best friend. Most people love their dogs and cats, but it takes a special kind of person to own and take care of exotic animals. Snakes, lizards, turtles, and monkeys don't usually come to mind when you think of man's best friend. But for Sabrina Clark, co-owner of Extreme Exotics, making friends comes naturally. I came home from the hospital as a baby and we had snakes and gators and lizards and turtles and all that kind of stuff. So we had a cat and a dog and we had a snake and a gator and it was always normal to me. Most exotic pets require a permit regulated by Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. We do have venomous reptiles on site, definitely require a permit, and a lot of people are against exotic animal ownership because they think that irresponsible people can just go buy a cobra. That's not how it works. Venomous snake permits require thousands of hours of training. Steven Brazil, owner of Extreme Exotics, has owned reptiles since he was young. I started learning more and more because my parents kind of put a restriction that says you can only have so many tanks. So then I started going, okay, what species can live together? How can I get around this? Exotic pets are really cool, but it's important to do your research before owning one. So go online or go into a store and talk to a specialist before you decide you want to own an exotic pet. A lot of times, people aren't prepared for how much time, money, and dedication goes into caring for these animals. For example, the red-tailed boa starts small, but can grow to be 10 foot long on average. This is a snake that a lot of people get as a baby and don't realize it can get this big and be this strong. So unfortunately, this is one we see a lot that gets some size to it. People don't think they can handle it, and then they bring it in and drop it off. So just one that we really have to educate people about. Yes, as a baby, they're super cute, but this is a lot of snake. <laughs> we usually try to strive and push a lot of people towards patience. You know, you don't have to have it today. You know, it's, it's a living creature. You may want to own it as a pet, but it also is going to own you and be part of your life. You can own all these amazing animals, but you definitely need to know the right way to go about it. We're really big about education before you walk out the door. And if we don't think that they'll do what's, what's necessary, we won't sell them an animal. You know, our business is not more important than the life of the animal. Extreme Exotics is a drop-off spot for exotic animals that can no longer be cared for, and it's also a great place to learn more information about exotic pet ownership. The worst thing somebody can do is keep an animal in a situation that is not healthy for the animal just because they're afraid of getting in trouble. Bring it here, drop it off, no questions asked, and we'll take care of it. Morgan Young, Inside Jacksonville. If anyone has or finds an exotic pet they need to release, you don't have to call an expert. You can drop them off without question at Extreme Exotics on Phillips Highway. Our five senses help paint a picture of how we view life. It is easy to overlook what you've never had to live without. That is, unless something you relied on was taken away from you or never given to you in the first place. Our own Katie Connors went out to see what it's like living without your hearing. Sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. How we communicate with others often determines how we are viewed by them. It varies from the tone in our voice to how we carry ourselves in everyday situations. However, for some people, things are not always so simple. Whether you're enjoying your favorite meal or just appreciating nature, your senses are a part of your life. Today I get to be a voice for two new friends who know exactly what it's like to lose one of their senses. Joshua and Natalie started dating this year after meeting at the University of Central Florida. They soon found out they have something unique in common. Joshua was breached as a baby, meaning he was born feet first. The pressure on his head caused severe damage to his hearing. Joshua's parents didn't pursue the medical approach, rather his immediate family learned sign language. At this point in his life, Joshua chooses not to pursue any form of hearing aids because he doesn't consider being deaf a stumbling block in his life. There is not enough education about deaf community, deaf culture, deaf issues, deaf awareness out there. 
so all we can do is improve our knowledge and spread out that knowledge. We just can't hear. We are the same, but we just can't hear, that's all. It's probably better that we don't hear. Natalie Bopes, Joshua's girlfriend, has two cochlear implants. Unlike Joshua, Natalie depends on her ears. Natalie's mother learned sign language alongside her growing up, while the majority of her family knows minimal. She grew up with hearing aids, allowing her to develop speech. She chose to get cochlear implants because her hearing aids stopped working for her. I had to learn how to hear, but it's weird because that becomes your new normal, so you don't have, like, I can't compare what I hear now to my hearing aid because they're both normal to me at different times, if that makes sense. So it's like your brain just, like, adjusts to it. How someone deals with hearing loss varies as much as people do. Around 100,000 cochlear implants have been implanted in the United States. Unlike hearing aids that make sound louder, a cochlear implant helps replace a damaged inner ear, creating a sense of sound. However, they do not work for everyone, and not every deaf person wants one. The Journal of Deaf Studies and Deaf Education states that around 1 in 20 Americans are hard of hearing or deaf, but like everyone else, they do not want to be treated like they're different. According to Joshua and Natalie, growing up without one of your senses can be difficult, but it all depends on how you choose to overcome your battles. Joshua and Natalie are two out of the estimated four million deaf people in the United States. Although growing up without their hearing had its fair share of challenges, they said it is important to know that it doesn't define who they are. If you know of someone that grew up without one of their senses, tag us at Inside Jack's UNF and tell us their story. Thanks to the Atlantic Ocean and St. John's River, we're surrounded by water. But sometimes it's easy to forget these important sources of well-being and enjoyment bring us some responsibilities too. Inside Jacksonville's Al Huffman shows us a couple of the challenges we face in keeping our waters free from invasive species. The St. John's River is widely used in Jacksonville, from recreational boating to cargo shipping and even marine biology surveys. But not all marine life in the river is native to the First Coast. Director of Marine Science Program at Jacksonville University, Dr. Dan McCarthy, says even common aquarium fish can be a problem. So anytime somebody new comes in, we're like, hmm, maybe there's a problem. One of them in particular, Plecostomus, the one that everyone calls plecos, is commonly purchased. And uh, people purchase them because they're algae suckers, first and foremost. And this is the same guy that you would purchase at Walmart, uh, but now is much, much bigger. Pleco fish can destroy riverbanks they burrow into, and because they're armor-plated, not many predators eat them. Behind me, the St. John's River. Looks good now, but it wasn't always that way. Apparently, this river was once completely clogged by an invasive water plant. Above water, invasive plants represent their own problems for the First Coast. Bureau Chief of the St. John's Water Management District, Steve Miller, says water hyacinth completely took over the river in the late 1800s. So I want you to imagine going out in your boat and launching it into the St. John's River and not being able to move because there's a raft of vegetation in front of you that you literally can't get through. Miller says kayaking groups and bodies of water, like Julington Creek, sometimes deal with the troublesome plant, but now chemical treatments and observation help keep most of it in check. Miller also says we should try to minimize the introduction of new species. You know, what we as humans have a hard time doing is um, euthanizing uh, these uh, exotic organisms. You know, we're done with them. Uh, we'd rather just throw them back in the water even though it's not the area that they came from, and then they potentially could cause a problem. However, not all non-native species are a problem. McCarthy says there's a lot of species that aren't from the area that live in the ecosystem just fine. Al Huffman, Inside Jacksonville. For more information on how you can keep non-native species from being a problem in your coastal community, contact the St. John's Water Management District. Coming up next, we look at how different generations view pop culture and channel it into their everyday lives. Also after the break, we meet some furry friends and learn how they help people with their mental health. Welcome back to Inside Jacksonville. 
This month, we're looking back on some of our favorite stories from the past few months. Most of us probably have a furry friend waiting for us at home. Exercise and eating habits are just the surface of our health and from our bodies. Beyond the physical aspect of our well-being, there's one very furry, important part of our lives that also impacts our health for the better. Inside Jacksonville's Tiffany Salome introduces us to some furry friends that will surely brighten your day. Dogs, big and small, change their owners' lives the minute they waltz into them. But did you know, your dog can actually help keep you healthy? Their sole job is to bring smiles. Meet Emma, a therapy dog that visits special education classrooms. Her owner and handler says Emma takes away the stress that comes with performing in front of peers. If she's with them in a calming way, sitting with them in a reading corner, it takes away their anxiety. Lab, um, he's very gentle. Bebe is also a therapy dog famous for lifting spirits. She works at Baptist Health and spends time with families in waiting rooms at hospitals. So the family member that is very nervous start stroking the dog and we have been told that they feel very comfortable after doing that and it's almost like a stress reliever. <laughs> These therapy dogs prove how helpful dogs can be in promoting happiness, reducing stress and boosting our health. David Fry owns his own therapy dog Angel and wrote a book about everything she does for others called Angels on a Leash. He boasts the benefits of simply having a dog around. You know, every dog is a therapy dog at heart because we all interact with our own dogs and they make us feel better. Interacting with a dog okay. lowers okay. your blood pressure, you. lowers your heart rate, uh, lowers your breathing rate, and it just it generally makes you feel better because there's an increase of the good hormones. <laughs> But don't take it from him, take it from someone who's owned an emotional support animal. One that's changed her health and her life for the better. Marlo is a registered emotional support animal. She helps her owner who struggles with anxiety, panic attacks, and depression to do everyday activities simply by being cute. Seeing her just kind of like makes me a little bit happier than I usually am. So that helps a lot with dealing with uh, my depression. Marlo helps Allison stay calm by licking her face repeatedly and laying on her lap. She also urges Allison to play with her by bringing her toys and ultimately keeping a smile on her face. No. Marlo, Bebe, and Emma are all trained therapy animals. <laughs> but there's no denying the effect that all dogs have on your health. By just being in your presence, man's best friend will do just that. Tiffany Salome, Inside Jacksonville. Oh Stop it. Stop it. Our pets can be some of the biggest pieces in our lives. They can bring a smile to our faces without even trying. How does your pet affect your life? Tweet us at Inside Jacks UNF. The easiest way to group different generations is usually by age. This includes baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and so on. Inside Jacksonville's Katie Connors takes a closer look at our generational evolution through pop culture and things like what music we're listening to and, of course, what we're wearing. Jamming out to your favorite song or rocking your favorite outfit are two ways to express your individuality. Although the concept is the same, the way we do these things have changed. Whether you listen to it or make it a part of your life, your musical taste and style is as unique as people are different. Rock lover and local drummer Neil Hornick says that music now is losing the flavor that the music he loved growing up had. Hornick says that his love for rock bands like Godsmack and other metallic music fuels him daily. Kurt Cobain is one of the many artists that play a huge influence on Hornick's appreciation for music. Way different now than when I grew up, uh, you know, because I grew up in the 80s, you know, set, well, late 70s, 80s, um, and your music then was more raw. And now again, it's more, you know, more perfect, I guess you could say. He says that music is what he lives to do. He compares his relationship with music to fish taking to water. Each generation down to each individual person all have an opinion on what music and clothing styles are best. However, some people argue that it all just repeats itself. 
like everything kind of goes around. So chances are in like five or 10 years, like I'll be really on board with whatever is in style. Laura Hoffman, senior at the University of North Florida, says the way she dresses is inspired by the music she listens to. Hoffman appreciates that many of the more modern styles are becoming trendy again. Hoffman says Dita Von Teis is one of the main inspirations behind her clothing style. She says the way Dita rejected anything modern shows her that she can too. It goes with whatever music I'm listening to at the time. Like if I'm wearing a mohawk, chances are I'm probably listening to Joan Jett, but if I'm dressed like pinup and rockabilly, I'm probably listening to like Elvis and Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. Hoffman says that style is your own and you don't need to conform to what is cool at the time. A generation is often defined by people who are born and living at about the same time. But a person's musical taste and style can only be defined by the boundaries set by oneself. This is Katie Connors with Inside Jacksonville. If you're interested in Neil's music or Laura's clothing, you can follow Neil's band on Jinx on Facebook, and you can find outfits like Laura's at shops like Grease Rags in San Marco or online at modcloth.com. And coming up after the break, we'll meet some lovely ladies from a local high school dance team who are slowly making a name for themselves. Also after the break, we take a trip to the grocery store to see how easy it is to be healthy without breaking the bank. Welcome back to Inside Jacksonville. This month, we're looking back on some of the best stories from the past few months. Eating healthy, it's a common goal for people of all ages and walks of life. But for some, it's easier said than done. Inside Jacksonville's Nora Zachariah takes us shopping for not only bargains, but also nutrition. I'm here at Earth Fair, one of the many organic food stores right here in Jacksonville, and I decided to meet up with one of my good friends to see if she was up for the challenge of making a meal for four with a budget of $100. Let's see if she can do it. There's a lot of stuff on sale today. With many fresh and often expensive items on the grocery list, staying under budget can be a challenge. The tagline is uh, healthy food for everyone. And we have, uh, we have what's called guaranteed meal days, uh, where we can, uh, five days of the week, uh, you can feed um, a family of four for two fifty a person. Help you change the odds too, like Dig Local, a network that aims to bring access to affordable, sustainably grown food to more areas of Jacksonville. Devin Rich, the chair of the board and lead market manager, says that they chose the placement for their ABC market because of a lack of grocery stores in the area. I think this is it. Steaks. Got my potatoes. I got my green beans, my asparagus, sour cream, and radish. My husband likes radish. And pasta for the kids. Let's hope I'm under budget. Let's go check out. $75. Look at me. What's on the menu tonight? Rinna decided to do a take on the traditional steak and potatoes, baked potatoes, pasta for the kids, and sautéed green beans with a touch of garlic for a twist. A light season of salt and pepper for the steaks before they head to the grill where the magic happens. With grilled veggies like mushrooms and asparagus, the meal is full of healthy options. Who knew eating healthy could be so affordable? With all this amazing food, we were able to stay under the budget of $100. Nora Zacharia, Inside Jacksonville. For affordable, healthy food and options near you, check out one of Jacksonville's two Earth Fair locations or find market information on diglocal.org. Finding friendships isn't always easy, but through mutual love, the road to connection can become stronger every day. When you think of close friends, what comes to your mind? I, I usually think loyal, caring, or maybe just someone who brings a smile to my face. Well, that's exactly how this group of ladies see each other. Inside Jacksonville's Mary Lisa Martinez introduces us to this group of lovely ladies. The high school years are often a tough time of transition for teenagers. Finding friends and fitting in can be difficult. One way to meet new people is to get involved. 
outside of the classroom. For these young women at Sandalwood High School, dancing for the dazzling ladies is opening the door to success on the dance floor and important friendships of it. Well, when I first came here, I didn't know anybody, and now like I'm close to every single person on the team. Jalia Hill created the Dazzling Ladies dance team back in 2015. After graduating from this high school, she wanted to build a team that was more than just a club. Not only do we practice and like perform together, we, we bond together. Hill's impacts on the girls have been significant. Kebriona Renfro and Kimberly Williams don't see her as just their coach. Well, she's not even just like our dance teacher, she's like our friend. She makes you believe in yourself, like you have to believe in yourself. The Dazzling Ladies have numerous awards, but that's not the most important reason of why they dance. Foster started dancing when she was two years old. She danced to relieve stress, but also to bond with her teammates. My favorite thing about dancing is that you can express yourself in any type of way and that sisterhood that you build. Brenda Perez also loves to dance, but besides improving her craft, she appreciates the important life lessons she learned from the team. And I definitely learned to share the spotlight, I'm not going to lie, so um, yeah, just learn to share and love more and, you know, become one. You can't dance as an individual all the time, you have to, you know, dance together. However, dealing with teenagers is not easy all the time. Hill says it's important to teach the girls healthy communication techniques. Because as they go off and like to adult world, a lot of them will join sororities or, or clubs in college and they, they'll know because they were on the dance team, okay, this is how a sisterhood should be. Dancing has not only brought the girls together, it has also helped them dealing with stress and hard situations. Renfro says the dancing team helped her through her hard time like an extended family. It was actually when my granddad died and like I was just sad and like dancing makes me feel like I got something to live for. Like it just makes me happy. There's no doubt these girls love dancing and they also love each other. Maria Lisa Martinez inside Jacksonville. The Dazzling Ladies Saints have come a long way since their start. This group has become more than just a dance team, but a family. The young women are looking forward to performing during basketball season and at competitions, so be on the lookout for this tight-knit group in March during the NDA Nationals in Orlando. That's a wrap for this edition of Inside Jacksonville. If you missed anything from today's program, just visit our website at unftv.com and click on Inside Jacksonville. You'll find expanded versions of our stories, photos, interviews, and other extras. That's unftv.com, Inside Jacksonville. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Inside Jacksonville. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time, Inside Jacksonville. We'll see you next time.